Sandra here from Create in Spain using Shortcuts a lot version 4.027 I think it is. Okay today I thought I'd do a brief tutorial on node editing. Some people are really scared of node editing and there's no great reason to be honest. Um, if you imagine nodes being the dots in a dot to dot book, only your dot to dot book is infinitely variable. You can alter where the dots are and the angles that come from those dots to make your drawing. I've zoomed in so you can see better, but I've just drawn, with a pencil tool, I've just drawn a line, a wiggly wiggly line. And you'll notice at the moment that it isn't closed. Now one of the things that people quite frequently want to do is to actually um, close a shape. And in this particular instance it's really easy. You just go to Path, and you go to close path and you see just there it has put in a line between the two endpoints and it's joined them together it's now closed and you could fill it with a color if that's what you wanted to do okay now say i'm not happy with the actual shape if i click on this button here third one down you'll be able to see all the nodes and what I'm going to do in this particular instance, I'm going to go to Path, Simplify. Because I've got 1,405 nodes on there for some strange reason. How did I manage to do that? Hmm, right. Okay, and if I simplify it, we get the same shape, pretty much, and it goes down to 43. Aha! That's much more like it. Now while we're on this subject, the higher the number in this box here, the greater the simplification of whatever you're putting into it. You can click off the nodes so that you just see the shape if you don't want to see the nodes. If I lower this number, I would end up with more nodes on this side than I have at the moment. Okay, and that's basically it. The higher that number, the lower this number. The lower this number is, the less accurate your shape will be. Now in some instances it doesn't lose anything much at all. I mean I've had cases where I've looked at it and thought, well I'm damned if I can see the difference to be honest. But be aware that you may in some instances alter the shape a bit too much if you got this set up to the highest number. But I'm just going to click OK in this case. And then when I click off of here and click it again, come on, we can see that I've just got a fewer number of nodes, much more manageable. And if your machine is juddering and stuttering when you're trying to cut a shape, the chances are it's because it has so many nodes in it, the poor machine doesn't know whether it's coming or going. Okay, they're probably going backwards and forwards like mad. So that's usually why your machine is delaying or stuttering. So simplification will solve quite a few of your problems without you actually doing anything great with the nodes whatsoever. Now what else can we see when we have the node selected? We can see these shapes here. And if I click on a node there, I can choose to have that as a node that has a straight line, one that has a nice rounded line, one that has an angle to it on one side and a curved side on the other, or I can have it so that it goes out as an angle from either side of the node. And if I pick that up, you can see, there we go, I've got an angle there. If I change it to that, and then do that, I get the angles taken away, and I get the round curve line. Now you see these handles here. They literally allow you to pull the shape about while the node remains in place. If I click on the node, I'm moving the node itself. All right. If I click on the handle and pull it, I can do all sorts of weird and wonderful alterations, but the node is staying put. The node is anchored. Okay, so that's the difference. I can make it 
so that these are smaller. I can make it so they're longer. Okay. Now, depending on which of these modes you have, depends what happens to the shape. This one is equal on both sides. If I click on this one, I will get a different effect altogether. I will get a curve on one side, and then I don't have the line on the other side until I pull it out, like so. Okay, so that's how that one works. And then this one, as you saw, was um, the sharp angle. So that's how you manipulate the actual lines themselves. If I want to add or delete a node, I click this pen nib tool down here, just under the text tool. And if I hover over a node, you can see there that a minus sign appears. And if I click on that node, it's now gone. Okay, click out of there again. Oops, <laughs> didn't want to do that. If I click on an area, let's go to this one again, that doesn't have a node, you'll see a plus sign coming up. And if I click, it will have put a node where I click the plus sign. So there we go. That's how you add a node. And again, you can change that node's properties in any way that you like. If you get stuck and you forget what you're doing at some point, go to the little question mark on the right hand side and click on the editing function. You'll find that you get hints and tips. If you click on the edit drawing or edit lines, whatever it's called, forget what it was called, um, you will get hints and tips down there. I think that is about it. Ex oh, except for one thing. If you have a drawing and you want to mess around with the nose, but you're scared of what you're doing, do what I always do, and that's take your original, go to copy it, open up another page by clicking on the plus button, and in this case I've already done it, copy it and paste it to another page, keeping your original on page one, so that you know exactly where it is and then you can mess around to this to your heart's content and you're not going to do any damage to your original and it will always be there for you and yeah fine i would hesitate to say that when you've got your copied one there just save your file so that both your copy and your original are then saved and then, you know, whatever you do, you can get back to whatever you started off with, okay? Other than that, have fun playing because that's what it's for after all. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.